Hello guys, uh, in this video I would like to explain about Taylor diagram uh, theory and interpretation. So that's mean in this video we will explain about the theory behind uh, Taylor diagram and in their interpretation. Uh, you can see that uh, in this diagram uh, there are three statistics uh, which is uh, which can be used in Taylor diagram for comparing uh, model data to the observed data. Uh, uh, I will explain this in the upcoming slides, but generally you can say that when you have when you when you, when you have the problem of evaluation, some model scenarios or whatever you want to choose some something, uh, you know, among the competing models, you need to compare that with the observed data. In that case, uh, one of the best techniques uh, for scientific publication, or technical reports, and thesis, uh, you can use Taylor diagram. Uh, you can see these are models uh, which I have used in my studies. The studies are already published. Uh, there are some machine learning and deep learning models I have used uh, to predict DTR, diurnal temperature range. This is a temperature extreme. And you can see uh, I have used the Taylor diagram for this purpose. And you can see there is observed data here. This the reference data, observed data. And then you are comparing uh, the, for these model data uh, you know, with the observed data. And the x axis, there is standard deviation, there is standard deviation, and these colors, uh, the golden lines uh, as the center root mean square error. And on this side, the correlation is given correlation. So that is from 0 to 1. So uh, let's see how we can uh, how we can talk about this in detail uh, in some slide. And before that, uh, I would like to ask you can search. Uh, that what is, uh, I mean, just to see Taylor diagram when it was developed. Just a theory. You can just go to Wikipedia and you will see. So, yeah, this is Taylor diagram, and it was uh, this diagram invented by Carl E. Taylor in 1994, published in, 20, in, in 2001. So he introduced this in 1994, but published in 2001 by Carl E. Taylor. So you can see, or you can see the detailed history of this as well. Okay, now let's go through the diagram. The I mean, what, how we can, you know, uh, what is this Taylor diagram? The diagram structure and which situation we can use. So a Taylor diagram is a powerful and compact graphical tool used to summarize how well patterns like model simulation or predictions match observation. It is simultaneously displays these three statistics as, as, I, as I already told you uh, that this is the powerful, one of the powerful, most powerful and compact graphical tools which can give you this, you know, you can give you this, um, the, uh, the performance of the models as compared to observed data. And of course, this can use three statistics simultaneously, which I have talked already, but I will discuss this later. Uh, that is like, uh, we can explain that here, correlation coefficient and how well the simulated pattern match the observed pattern. So the correlation coefficient is used normally. How will uh, the two variable move together? What is the pattern you know, of two data set? If the two data set has different pattern, I mean totally opposite pattern, the correlation coefficient can be very close to minus one, that is perfectly negative correlation. And if it is uh, the two variable just follow each other, you know, in the moment like um, uh, uh, whether they are increasing or decreasing, but they are moved together in the same direction, then the correlation coefficient should be or can be near to plus one, that is perfectly positive correlation. The second statistic, sigma uh, standard deviation, that is denoted by sigma, and the correlation coefficient normally denoted by small or uh, variability of this uh, simulated and observed data. So in this case, uh, you can see that uh, this is important to see the variability of two data sets. If one data set has higher variability and the other has low variability, then their scan, uh, we cannot say that you know this is a good, this uh, the model data is good. So the observed data as the benchmark, that is reference data, and we will see that which model closely reproduce the variability of observed data. So you can see in this, uh, in this 
the art which i created by my own for my own uh, you know models you can see this is observed data and standard deviation is here 0.5 somewhere close to 0.5 this can be 0.6 or something like this and you can see that the two models that is jbm and ann closely reproduce the standard deviation of observed data this is just lie on you know on the observed data is very closely and then the other models you can see they are far away so that's mean they are not well in reproducing the uh, observed standard deviation uh, the last statistic the third statistic is center root mean square error r c r m c the difference in pattern between the simulated and observed values excluding the biases uh, so this again this can show you that uh, you can see the c r m c formula and then you can interpret that well but of course uh the small value indicate a better performance of the model and the higher value of the model show uh you know uh bad performance so you can see uh these two models ann and jvm are very close they're reproducing very closely the variability of observed and simulated uh, observed data these two models jvm and ann closely reproduce the uh standard deviation are the variability of observed data secondly you can see these models also have very less standard uh, uh, CRMC center root mean square error. You can see this is these are the values of center root mean square 0.2 and then 0.4 in this range and 0.86 and 0.81 and 1.2 and so on. And the, the, the first one is correlation coefficient. So you can see how closely and how strong is the correlation coefficient between uh n in jvm with the observed data just look at this and this is just very close to one this is greater than 0 0.99 look at this so this means that you choose based on these three statistics using tail diagram you can see jvm and n in are the best model among these computing machine learning and deep learning model and particularly jvm is better as this is more close to the observed data Okay, now let's move to the other slide. But okay, so this is now a little more clear. Uh, to the diagram structures, so you can see now the diagram structure. The observed data set is represented by the reference point on the x-axis. Okay, this so this correlation is one with the observed. Of course, observed data is like this. This is a reference data. Observed data is somewhere here. Uh, the radius from the origin represent the standard deviation. Okay, we have we have talked about this. And the angle from the x axis corresponds to the correlation coefficient. And the distance between the model point and the reference point represents the CRMSE center root mean square. So you can see here uh, standard deviation is here, and like this one and this one. And then this you can see this is the C, uh, CRMSE. And the angle, this is from the origin, this is the angle, this is the correlation coefficient. So you can see if the model has higher correlation coefficient, lower, uh, lower uh, CRMSE, and the model closely reproduces the standard deviation of the observed data, we can say that model is better. So this is, yes, now uh, we can see. Uh, this, uh, this is some of the interpretation, and we already have done this. Now, the important thing is when we can use Taylor diagram. This is the most important question. When we can use Taylor diagram to evaluate multiple models or simulation against the observed data, or you can say you can, uh, yeah, in the situation is to choose different data sets rep uh, reproduced by different model scenarios, something like this. You need to compare that for with the observed data. I put, most of the time you do that for reference duration. I mean, we are talking about same F6 data. The reference duration is from 1985 to 2014. So you need to compare observed data, the simulated data from various models uh, to the observed data for this duration. And if you have used like deep learning, machine learning model, I have used in my paper. So I'm comparing, you know, the output of deep learning machine learning models for climatic streams uh, with the reference duration and then I can choose like I have done in this case I have done in this case this is DTR temperature extreme and I use these model one two three four five six seven seven uh, machine learning and deep learning model and then I choose uh, JV in particularly and N is also very com you know closely compete uh, to visualize model performance uh, concisely in 
climatology, hydrology, environmental science. This is particularly useful in these your fields, these areas of research, but you can use anywhere when you have the situation like uh, multiple model to evaluate multiple model or simulation against observed data. Generally, so you can use this in any area where you have such type of situation. And this is again the same plot and you know the interpretation and the data format. Uh, this is the first video. This is about theory and interpretation. So in the second video, I will uh, I will explain what data format you need for this type of plot and we will do this in R. Uh, there are two packages. Uh, we can use libraries. You can use one is open here and the other is Plotrix. So we will try to explain uh, in each library that how you can how you can uh, develop how, how you can create a Taylor diagram for your own data. Okay, I think uh, this is enough for today. So thank you very much and see you in the next video. Ciao.